my childhood began in, uh, in fact, it was all in Columbia, South Carolina. So I grew up in the segregated South. I was a student at C.A. Johnson High School, which was one of the two black high schools in Columbia at the time. My interests lie mainly in um, science and math. Uh, I had zero interest in the military, uh, zero interest in the space program. Um, you know, I was, a, I was a science fiction buff like most kids back then. And I saw a program on television called Men of Annapolis about life at the Naval Academy, a place that I knew nothing about, but I fell in love with it watching the series. Uh, you know, just, I was fascinated by one, the campus itself, but, uh, but two, the training that the midshipmen were going through, the fact that their uniforms were just incredible, especially the dress uniform with the high collar. And so I decided in, in seventh grade at the age of 12, that that's where I wanted to go to college. And, and everything I did after that was working toward getting there. And but I finally overcame the, the resistance of my, my two US senators and my congressional representative and not sending me there. And I was able through the, through the office of the, of the president of the United States at the time, Lyndon Johnson, to um, get an appointment from Congressman William Dawson. Uh, I was not gonna fly airplanes because that was inherently dangerous. And I was not going in the Marine Corps. The, and then my very first year, my first company officer or the, the one commissioned officer responsible for about 150 midshipmen students uh, was a young Marine infantry officer fresh from Vietnam. And he was incredibly inspiring. And, and uh, to me, he was much like my dad. He was very tough, but eminently fair. And um, when it came time to graduate after four years, although he wasn't still there, I looked back on my time and I said, you know, I want to be like him. So I decided I would accept my commission in the Marine Corps. The best leaders and the specific single best leader in my four years at the Naval Academy was Major John Riley Love, who was a Marine. And uh, but he taught me to be tough. He taught me to cry, believe it or not. Uh, you know, he 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 told me it was OK to cry, that, that men, strong men do cry. In fact, it's a way of showing your emotion and and um, it's a way of helping you get over hurdles sometimes. And so you can move on with life. So, uh, but that's how I happened to choose the Marine Corps. While I was training, I found I didn't like crawling around in the mud. That's a stark awareness for a, for a person who thinks he's going to be an infantry officer. I took my little aviation option that I had coming out of the Naval Academy and we headed to Pensacola. And the first time I got in an airplane and we lifted off, I, I was just blown away. I trained in the A6 and flew that in Vietnam. And I was a, a student in, a, uh, in it was basic jet training in Meridian, Mississippi. And my wife and I had been on a, a fun-loving weekend in New Orleans, and we hustled back to Meridian so as to gather around a black and white television in the, in the bachelor officer's quarters and, and watch man land on the moon. And I was mesmerized by it, but, but not at all impressed to the point of wanting to be an astronaut. Eventually, I became a test pilot, and I was in a place called Patuxent River, Maryland, not very far from where I live here in Washington, D.C., or, or on the outskirts of Washington. And uh, while I was training, uh, several of the brand new space shuttle astronauts, the folk that were selected in 1978 in the very first class, uh, and it included Ron McNair and two other black astronauts for the first time ever. And uh, Ron and I had grown up about 42 miles from each other in South Carolina, did not know each other, but I had an opportunity to meet him that weekend when he came up with some of the other graduates of test pilot school for a reunion and we talked the whole weekend and uh, when he got ready to go back to Houston he asked me if I was going to apply for the space program I said not on your life and he looked at me incredulously he couldn't believe that I said no and he asked me why not I said Ron they'd never pick me and he looked at me and he, he just looked me sternly in the eye and he said you know that is the dumbest thing I ever heard and he said how do you know if you don't ask and what he did was he embarrassed me he made me feel really small because my mom and dad were, high, were teachers when I was growing up and they had always told me I could do anything I wanted to do and I had forgotten that. And, uh, and so embarrassed as I was, when Ron left, I went and got my pen and paper and I filled out my application for the astronaut program, um, got an opportunity to be nominated by the Marine Corps to NASA and then to go to Houston, Texas to interview. And I ended up being selected in the second group of space shuttle astronauts two years after Ron McNair. So that's that's a long story of how I ended up in the space program with, that, with not wanting to be that growing up. Um, I flew four times in space, all aboard the, the space station. All four were unique. All four were incredibly exciting. Uh, I was just as giddy and excited 
on my fourth flight as I was on my first flight. Uh, you know, going to space is is unique, as you as you would understand. It never gets old. The views from space um, are always mesmerizing, and uh, and you're always seeing something that you never saw before. Being a man, a, a, an African American male, meant that I was the minority. There were you know there were no women to put beneath even that. So so we were the bottom of the bottom of the rung in this in this society where people tend to think about power and, and place. Um, I, I probably started while I was at the Naval Academy. The fact that I came from the segregated South and I was accustomed to segregation, but I went to the Naval Academy where it was integrated in, um, you know, in principle, but, but just like the South, segregated de facto. Um, we lived together and everything, but we very seldom associated with each other. After wanting to go to the Naval Academy so bad my first year, I hated it. I, I didn't like, uh, you know, I thought I had left the segregation of the South. I thought I had left uh, the abuse and the harassment and everything else. And I found that, no, I had not. It had just changed where it was and how it shown itself. I didn't have to like the Naval Academy to be successful there, you know, to get through. That all I had to do was just hang in there like my dad said. And, and show them that they couldn't run me out. So that's kind of what happened. I, I did pretty well. So, so my first piece of advice is study hard all the time, um, constantly study. Kids say, but what do I need to study if I want to be an astronaut? Math, science, uh, engineering, all kinds of technical things. But you also need to be able to read and write and converse fluently uh, because you've got to be able to present yourself and your You've got to be able to present your ideas in a way that people will be list, willing to listen and, and hear you out. And, and you've got to be able to, to win the debate with other people. And you can't do that if, you, if you're not um, literate, if I may say so. Uh, history is critically important as we're learning now. If we don't, if we don't know our history, we're destined to, to repeat it. Uh, second thing is work real hard. And that, um, I try to re for kids, I try to relate it to, to sports and uh, anything in which they're interested, like dance, art, music. Everybody you've ever had as a coach or a teacher says, if you want to be good, you've got to practice. You need to work really hard in the, in the classroom to make sure that, that you're, you're trying to be the best, even if you're not going to be the best in your class. And then finally, the, the most important thing is never, ever, ever be afraid of failure. Don't let someone else convince you that you can't do something. Um, and and don't, don't convince yourself that you can't. Just be a risk taker, be a smart risk taker, but don't ever let fear keep you from doing something that, that you want to do. So that would be it. Study hard, work hard, don't be afraid of failure. A lot of the things that you and your generation are going through right now are the same things that, that my generation went through in the 50s and 60s.